and as you will see from this shot of the helicopter, we've now returned rather sharply to the modern way of life. And I'm also about to return to the coast, not exactly on the coast path, but to the coast where the railway passes the old railway station house at Marazion. So come along and join me there. Lovely, lovely breeze off the sea here. It's Mount Bay, St. Michael's Mount there, looking handsome in this light. And I want you to look at these on my left. These are old railway carriages, the old Pullman coaches from the Southern Bell. Lovely train used to run from Waterloo down to Brighton, exactly one hour. Used to be one of them leave at nine o'clock in the morning, and we always used to say that by five past you were already on your first White Shield Worthington. Lovely train it was, I enjoyed it in the old days. It's now owned by um, the British Rail, I think the Workers' Association, and they come down here and have their holidays in them. How very lovely it must be too. And farther up here, the old railway station on the left, owned today by a man called Ernest Hitchings. He bought it off British Rail, he's turned it into a licensed restaurant, very fine place it is. We're going to pop in there and sit down for a very good reason, because we've really come into limbo here, over there, I told you, in Mausel was where the North Coast path officially ended. And the other side of Marazion, which is where we're going into now, is where the South Coast path either starts or if you walk the logical way, and I think walking southwest, that is from Dorset into Cornwall, it would end here again. We've done 40 half-hour films from Western Supermare to here. 20 uninterrupted hours of programme. And I thought it might be a nice time to take stock. And I'd like to introduce you to some of the men, and indeed the women, who have made all these programmes and get them to talk about what they've enjoyed mostly about it. And they're all going to wait for me here. We're going to sit down and have a drink, of course, and talk about it. So come on, join them. I might have known, I might have known. Leave you alone for five minutes and already you've been ordering beer. Whose is that? Yours? That's yours. Oh, how splendid. Cheers, lads. Cheers. Cheers. Something I've wanted to do for a long time. And that's interview you lot. Twenty years you've been round interviewing other people, not you, James, but these others have, and I bet when I come to talk to you I won't get a word out of you, will I? Not a word. I want to introduce you to this gentleman on my left first. Because this is Jim one. he's the film editor and Jim you've been with us every foot of the way haven't you? Yes except for the first four programs I've done the last 36. Well that's right the first yeah, four first were done four up in London, London weren't yes. they? Were for about Britain that's yes, what started that's right, it off yeah. yeah. Obviously at a time yeah. like this um, I've got to ask you the kind of question that yeah. says is the one you particularly love or is there one item or one particular thing that happened that you like better than all the others? Uh, not as such the entire walks from start to finish I love the scenery is beautiful the people are fantastic but what I do love is sequences that the public don't often see. I mean, one classic example which they did see was when you were on Rock Beach going across to Padstow and you interviewed that. Mr. Tom Hicks, if you remember. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> the beach master. That's yeah. it. Tom, you look a picture of a contented man this morning. I am very contented, thank you. You're beach master here I'm at Rock. I'm beach master at Rock, yes. The kind of job I think most men dream of retiring to, really. Yes, it's a very nice job, you know, get busy summertime, but mainly it's very interesting and nice. What does it mean to, to a Padstow man, or, or woman for that matter, hobby off day? It's a big thing in your life, isn't it? Well, as one old man said, it's Christmas Day and Easter all rolled into one. You really enjoy yourself. Well, yeah. Tom, I'll just be in time to call the old out, I think. Well, well the Blue Ribbon Off, isn't it, the first one, Tom? Well, that's the, it, first well, one the, off? the name is Jeff. Jeff, oh. <laughs> Never mind. And also, as a matter of interest, there's two little sequences which aren't, haven't been shown, but we will show, which are on the front of this very programme, where you arrived at Penzance Airport from the Sillies. And you remember what happened there as well? <laughs> I'll never forget it, yes. <laughs> And in coming back here to the heliport, I've left Penzance behind. I'm on the way to where I want to be, which is Marazion, which is just a little farther down the road on my left. 
but it's absolutely right to be here because when this coach goes, I'll be able to show you where I'm going. <laughs> 49, 238, take one. And then they brought me back here to the heliport, and by doing so, I've left Penzance behind. I'm halfway between where I want to be, which is to Marazaya. But I'm not going to go on, I'm going to go back. I am when the truck. Sitting next to James is Lynn and Lynn PA, Continuity Girl, but I prefer Continuity Girl with a film unit, don't you? Yes, I think so. It's more, more perfect. professional. Yeah. And on her left is Keith. And you've been you started I out started at Western Super Mare, didn't you, Keith? Yes, and came half the way at least. Yes, seventy two was started, I think. That's it was. right, yes. yes. It's a long time. And came about halfway round and enjoyed every minute and of it. And then went into the studio. That's right, yes. And that young man next to him, Roger? Yes, I joined uh, the walks at Bude. When I joined the company, um, you got to Bude, so I, I started in Cornwall, if you like. You came as David Howarth, the cameraman's assistant, and since then you've been made up yourself to cameraman, Roger. That's right, yes. And you were responsible for me having an experience that I enjoyed, I think, more than anything I've enjoyed for many a long time. Well, yes, I, I uh, remember the day very well. It was a gorgeous sunny day, and I know you were viewing the prospect with some apprehension, but of course you went up with uh, Dave Pentecost, who used to be the chief flying instructor at uh, Perrinporth, where the uh, Cornish Gliding Club are based, and you had your very first trip in a glider. All clear above and behind? Up slack, please. Most of it at Perrinport. How often do you come up here? I come up most weekends. As chief flying instructor, I'm more or less expected to be here. Although I have a, a team of instructors underneath me, about 10 or 12, and these work a roster for me. Well, there's Perrinport Beach with the tide almost completely in. Yes. I'm now going to go into land now, turning right. I could stay here forever. Next to Roger is an electrician. We always have to bring electricians with us. I've never quite understood why, because we've never had any light. But, <laughs> <laughs> but there's Ted, who represents the other six, uh, six altogether. Well, there's more now, but the yeah. six who regularly come on yeah. walking west yeah. with Ted. Have they enjoyed it? Have the electricians? Oh, tremendously. Uh, my first one with you was the tin mine. At Givor. At Givor. And you came down below ground. That's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. But you're a Cornishman, Ted, aren't you? Yeah. But you never wanted to be a miner. Never. Never. No. One visit down was enough for me. I enjoyed it, Clive, but uh, shouldn't have to live down there. No, the idea of this is for, this is a far better way of earning well, a living. Sitting <laughs> <laughs> here with a pint of beer and being paid for. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I, I, I really w wish you could see what's going on in between all these films. You probably see I've got two sound recorders, both operating the same machine. Bill, take those off and talk to me. Could Keith can take over, can he now? Yes. Because I want to introduce Bill, who's come all the way after Keith, every yeah. foot of the way, with sound. And you enjoyed it, Bill? Superb. Excellent. Yes. Have you had any particular film or incident you, you most recall? Yes, I think the um, Rooks at St. Morgan and Hyde. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken the like Falcon a true <laughs> sound recording. When you say the Rooks, not because they're beautiful birds, but no. because you've got such perfect sound. Yes, they gave a very good performance, I thought. And that was at the Falcon? At the Falcon, yes. Cheerio. Listen to that noise. I like the end of the world, that noise does. Bye -bye. Well, I should say so, yeah. <laughs> Tastes all the better for that, you know. <laughs> the nation will never get on its feet while they're all stood there, you know. <laughs> I love this place, I truly do. Go oh, look at that horse, Jessica. Doesn't it look handsome? I don't know what you all think of doing, but somewhere during the course of this day, you know, we've got to get some more work done. Do you think between you, you could pick the gear up and, and start to work again? Do you think you could all do that, Roger? Good lad, you pick that up. Because before we leave here, there's just one other person I want you to see who is determined that he was not going to get into this film, but he most definitely is, and that is the cameraman, David Harris, who's taken almost every foot of beautiful film that you've seen all the way around from Western Supermare to here. Come on, David, you can get up out of that eyepiece now and let, let the viewers see you, because I've had enough letters asking who, who takes all the film. I know, I know. Have you enjoyed yourself? Very much, very much, Clive. Marvellous series. Have you any particular incident you like most of all, or something you recall with great pleasure? Well, out of 30 programmes, there's a lot of things happened, you know. But I think the one that really sticks out for me is when we went to Land's End Airport, and Mr Bellamy, who had uh, just built that wonderful old DH-2 aircraft. He rolled it out of the hangar that first day and without any fuss and bother, just got in, opened up the throttles and took off and flew it around for a couple of circuits and landed it perfectly. Yes, it was incredible because he was wearing a blazer, wasn't he? That's right. wasn't he yes. blazer and, yes. and flannels and he put a leather hat That's on right. and a pair of goggles. When he landed, he said, I think I'll go and have a coffee cup of coffee and think about that lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it really Remarkable was splendid. And it, it'd be worth seeing again, wonderful. wouldn't it? Yes, it would. And of this, well, this was the first effective fight that the British ever had. Um, I suppose, really, you could say, rather hackney with the forerunner of the Spitfire and the Hurricane on the wall. This is the first effective British fighter. Um, so it should be all right. I love your attitude. Do you never have any qualms at all? Or you just you can't, you can't afford those. <laughs> you just get in and away you go. Yes. Open the throttle and it, it'll fly. Well, I don't know about you lot, looking around, you've all finished your beer, I'll finish mine. 
And shall we pick the gear up and go and do some work? Yep. All right. Uh, you put that one on there before anybody knocks it out. Okay. Come on then. What's the matter with you? You're not. You're not with us. You're not coming. You haven't spoken to me yet. I haven't spoken to you. Oh, Ian, I'm sorry. And that, and that, the other Cornishman on the unit. And Ian, uh, you're the assistant uh, uh, for David. Right, yep, and you yep. joined us after young Roger. Uh, went to be a cameraman, full uh, cameraman, said, didn't you? Yep, two years ago. So where did you come into the unit? I started at um, Mausel. Around the Mausel area. The old lady with the birds and Tom Who's Walcott's that? Who? evening, was it? That's right, for Christmas. Yep. That's right, with all the fishermen in Mausel. Are you enjoying yourself? Oh, yes, very much, very much. Because you were a padstone. No, don't you? At the moment, I, you live in Padstow. I live there, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's another world, even in Cornwall, isn't it? Padstow. Uh, it's a nice place. They're a funny nice. lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, pick your gear up and let's get on the way. <laughs> well, as you can see, I finally got the film unit back to work again. And now what of the future? Well, ahead, lies the whole of the southwest coast peninsula park starting at swanage in dorset traveling right through and along the dorset coast into devon the whole of the south devon coast crossing into cornwall at plymouth and finally ending at marazion and incidentally we have been invited to visit st michael's mount by lord st levin and i hope very much i'll be able to do that for you at some other time Till then, well, I'm going to wander off towards Marazion and I'm going to have another look at that South Coast Park. Has made the perfect pizza. Boarding the love boat next on nine are Jill St. John, Peter Lawford, and Sonny Bono. Then at 9 30, there's top variety entertainment on the Don Lane Show with special guests the four kinsmen, Robin Jolly and Billy Thorpe. Tonight's program was brought to you by Futuretronics. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. <laughs> well, quite a lot of the young women at the clinic have had their hair done like this. Yeah, well, perhaps their husbands don't mind them coming home looking like half a mark. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be back. I'm sure you will. Good night. <laughs> hey, don't walk down any dark alleys. You might give someone a fright. Katie tries a new look hairstyle, and it's a disaster. Chris is anything but complimentary. In Life Begins at 40, Wednesday at 8 o'clock, here on Channel 9. Does your deodorant get puffed out? New Dial is concentrated with 50% more active ingredients in every spray. So it keeps you drier when you need it most. Dial. It keeps you confident through the huff and puff of the day. Keeping in shape means a combination of things. Exercise, diet, every little bit helps. That's why we're using Weight Watchers Polyunsaturated Margarine. It's made to Weight Watchers high standards of taste and quality. Do you know it spreads 28% further than all the margarine? It really helps you to save calories. Suits us, because it helps. Weight Watchers whipped polyunsaturated table margarine. It helps.